Today I'm launching a new app that I built with my business partner Kaz. It's called Ready Runner, and it's an AI chat tool that runs on Mac, Windows, or on the web. It's powered by the same GPT-3 and GPT-4 models that power ChatGPT. It's got a really clean UI and is full of features that make you more productive. You can download it right now at readyrunner.ai, and you can use it for free to send up to 10 GPT-3 messages per month. Subscribers can get more messages and use the more capable GPT-4 model. Now the coolest feature that we built into Ready Runner is the system prompt library. There's actually a feature in the GPT APIs called the system message. And this feature is not exposed through the ChatGPT website. You can't access it there. But we built in this system that allows you to create system messages to get the kinds of responses that you want. Now you may have heard of people using prompts in ChatGPT. You might say something like, summarize all messages as bullet points. But there's a couple problems with this. One is that as you send more messages, that initial instruction message gets further and further back in the conversation and eventually is removed from the message memory. And the AI is not taking that message into account when you send a new message. And because they're regular user messages, they're not given the same weight as this system message. Now in Ready Runner, you can create your own library of these types of prompts. You can activate or deactivate them whenever you like. And when they're active, they're always gonna be sent along with your current message. Now by using these system prompts, you can create something that feels less like a chat and more like a custom tool. So for example, I could make a prompt that says, take any incoming Chinese message, translate it into English, also show me the phonetic pronunciation. So now if I'm learning Chinese, I have this available that I can send in Chinese messages, get the translation and the phonetic pronunciation back. I don't need to say each time, translate this message into English because that's already accounted for in the system prompt. Now, if I keep this in my sidebar as a chat with that prompt applied, I always have quick access to come here, send in a message and get a translation back. Another type of prompt I like to use is to specify a programming language. So I might just make a simple one that says, you are a JavaScript programmer, so that if I ask a programming question, the code examples that come back are always in JavaScript without me needing to specify what language I'm talking about each time. And another example of a system prompt that I like a lot is I have a friend who is Japanese and he does a lot of English writing and sometimes asks me for help editing it. So I helped him create this prompt that says, take all incoming messages, edit them to sound like they were written by a native English speaker, then create a list of your edits and then create that list again in Japanese. So again, this is like creating your own little tool because you don't need to say edit this text each time you can just paste in with this prompt applied and you'll get back the edited text along with all the edits. And I threw in the Japanese there just so he could read it in his native language to be extra sure about those edits. The prompt library feature is so cool because it's very open-ended and you can create any kind of prompt you like. I even made one for Minecraft so that while I'm playing Minecraft, I can ask a quick question like, what's a good source of food? And it knows that I'm not talking about real life that I'm talking about in the game. Some people like to make prompts based on different personalities or characters for different programming languages, debugging code, translating, for summarizing text in a specific way. I often see prompts being shared and passed around online. It's nice to be able to take those, put them into your personal prompt library, and then just activate them as needed. Now check out how the messages stream in from the top. In Ready Runner, when you send a message, we slide it up to the top of the window and then the response streams down from the top, making it much easier to read while it's streaming. Because in other systems where the messages stream up from the bottom, the current line that you're reading is gonna be moved up every time a new line is added, making it super hard to read. We've tried to account for lots of little UI conveniences like that throughout Ready Runner. Now I wanna talk about how the message memory is handled in Ready Runner. So one of the cool things about AI chat tools is being able to reference a previous message and having the AI know what you're talking about. Now there's no magic to this. It just means that you're sending the previous several messages along with the new one so that the AI model can see all of the messages at once and it knows what you're referring to if you're referring back to a previous message. But it's nice to know exactly what messages are in the history so that you know whether or not the AI is gonna be taking your message into account. Now we make this explicit with these little dots next to the messages. If a message is currently going to be included in the memory, when you send your next message, it has a dot next to it. Now, as you send more messages, there's only so many that can fit into the memory. And so the dot will be removed from older messages and you'll know that those aren't in the history if you care to check. You can also clear out the memory by clicking this broom button. And that just ensures that the AI is not going to take into account any of the previous messages if you wanna have a clean start. 
You can also just create a new chat. And if you have cleared the memory, you can also undo it and bring back the message history, even if you've already sent other messages in the meantime. Okay, another feature that I really wanna highlight is just the fact that this runs on your desktop. So you can go into the settings here and set a hotkey. And this is really a game changer because being able to access the app instantly with a hotkey from anywhere on your system means that you can ask a question without getting pulled out of the flow. So if I'm programming and I go, oh, what's the difference between offset height and client height? I forgot. I can hit my hotkey, pull up Ready Runner, ask that question, see the answer, and then keep going. So the fact that I don't need to open up a browser, think about whether I was logged in, I just hit the hotkey and I'm there. It really changes the types of questions you would consider asking because you don't have to think about whether it's worth it to go to the website. I also want to note that you want to be careful asking AI for these kind of factual questions because sometimes you'll get answers that are made up but sound realistic or sound truthful. The best types of questions to ask are ones that are easily verifiable. So this one, it was almost on the tip of my tongue. So when I see the answer, I kind of immediately know that it's right. So AI doesn't always give perfectly accurate responses, but for certain types of things, it's a huge productivity boost to be able to get answers and having it here on your desktop with this clean UI and the prompt library makes Ready Runner my favorite way to interact with AI chat. So I hope you'll go to readyrunner.ai and download it, try it for free. We're a two person software studio that's never accepted any outside funding. So we rely entirely on our customers to support our product development. So it means a lot to us if you'll try out our app and tell your friends or coworkers about it.